Thank you, Hannah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ndukwe Onoha. And I love that picture. That was taken by a creative in Derby named Daniel Dietrich. And ever since he took that picture, I've vowed to use the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, for go back there. My name is Ndukwe Onoha. I'm a copywriter by day and a poet by design, but also a filmmaker and we'll get into, or an aspiring filmmaker, we'll get into that. Pretty much all I've done from uh, my professional experience to uh, the, my hobbies have been to tell stories. And I think it's just quite fitting that when, you know, Hannah asked if I would like to speak on folklore, uh, it was, it just felt natural. And I'm waffling now, in case you've not noticed. Um, but yeah, you know, but that's me. I tell stories in different forms, um, professionally and personally. Now, folklore, uh, Hannah said something when um, she was um, speaking. She said, uh, all stories are folklore, in a way, you know, because when you think about it, all you need to do is situate the time, the place, whatever is going on around, and people's interpretation of that. And years later, we're going to go, oh, you know, these guys had an explanation of something. You know, so all stories, really. And folklore, you know, that the traditions, beliefs, customs uh, and of a community passed through generations by, uh, mostly by word of mouth. But again, they help people, you know, at that time to understand or to try, attempt at understanding their world that they lived in. You know, so they give us a sense of the world and they're like markers in time. You know, think of it as, as, as a signpost uh, when you're walking to a new area. You know, it helps you know which way to go, where you are exactly. Think of it as Google, Google Maps or whatever map software you use. You know, but in, 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 in the creative communities, in, apart from creative communities really, in our daily lives, you know, these are guides, you know, these are markers in time and space. And they help us understand how the world works. For instance, that guy over there, in Igbo you know, uh, traditions, we will call Amajoha. But you will know him as Thor. Again, it's people's understanding, no matter, depending on where they were, trying to understand how you know, the mysteries of thunder, lightning and all that, you know, and then of course build stories around, just try to say, okay, when this man gets angry, this happens. The lady, uh, that's not uh, Dracarys from Game of Thrones. Uh, no, uh, no, not Dracarys, what's her name? The Targaryen lady, no, that's not her. That is a depiction of Annie. You know, she's a goddess of, of the earth. She's a goddess of justice. You know, someone, uh, you know, under tradition you might call Gaia, right? You know, so again, it goes to show how no matter where you are, we are all intertwined, you know, in our stories. And if we, if we're able to, you know, let down our walls, let down our guards and just listen to each other, we'll find that we're all looking for the same thing and we're all trying to tell the same stories, you know, through different means. And the last one, you know, maybe I'll tell you, one folklore to illustrate the last one. So way before humans walked the earth, animals roamed it. Animals lived as we do now, you know, they interacted with each other, they built houses, they formed relationships, they went around their normal businesses. But as everything in life, there are ups and downs, you know, there, there's a time of plenty and a time of want and when our story starts is at the time of famine. There was hunger everywhere. But for some weird reason, it was just the earthbound animals that were, you know, in the midst of this starvation. The birds were all well-fed and plump, you know, and looking good. And the tortoise, which in most Nigerian folklore is a very cunning animal, noticed this trend. So he went to his friend, you know, the pigeon, and he asked, why? Why are you well fed? Why are you looking good and the rest of us are hungry? And then the pigeon said, well, what happens is that every so often 
the king of the birds holds a feast for all of us. And we all go to his palace in the sky and we feast and eat till our bellies are full. And that keeps us for, you know, for a long time until the next time we need to do this again. And the tortoise thought, you know, this is a good idea. Perhaps I should go up as well. But there was one problem, you see, he has no feathers. Or he had no feathers. And being the cunning animal that he is, he, re he knew that given his reputation, if he goes to ask for feathers, no one will lend him. So what he did was to go to each and every bird he saw and ask for just one feather. You know, told them a bogus story, oh, I want to do something interesting, so I just need a feather. And he secretly collected all these feathers. And on the day of the feast, when all the birds were gathered to go to the castle of the, of the king in the sky, this new, amazing, multicolored bird shows up. And everyone was amazed, who on earth is this? And they asked him what his name is. Like, oh, my name is all of you. I'm like, huh, that's an interesting name. <laughs> So off they went to, you know, to the sky. And when they got there, the drinks were brought out. Now, in the Igbo tradition, you know, what we have, and again, not just in Igbo, but in Nigeria, there's, there's this thing called palm wine. It's lovely. But anyway, I digress. So the palm wine was brought out, and the waiter says, oh, man, this is for all of you. Now, the tortoise had thought about this beforehand. So he said, oh, are you sure for me? Right. You know, and this confused everyone. I'm like, oh no, don't worry. They said this is for all of you. They'll bring the rest for everyone. And foolishly, they believed him. So he drank to his fill. Then they brought out the pounded yam and the you know, food and the egusi soup and everything. I said, this is for all of you. At this time, the other birds were catching on to what, you know, what was going on, but they had been played. And so it was that the toddies ate the food and the drink for everyone. That's it. And as they said, having an argument, someone, someone realized, hang on, this bird does look familiar. And then took his feather and like, wait, hang on, this is the feather you got from me. And then everyone came around and took their feathers and lo and behold, it was a tortoise. And I'm like, right, let's see how you get home from here. But the tortoise also just being a master of manipulation goes to the pigeon and tells the story, oh, my wife is pregnant, don't, don't, don't let me, don't leave me here. You know, just when you get back home, tell her to bring out all the soft things around, you know, look for, you know, the grass, pile them up so that I can jump from here and land perfectly. And the pigeon agreed. But on his way, he real, you know, on his way down, he remembered all the ills that was done to him. So he goes to the wife and says, oh man, I don't know what your husband is doing, but he says to bring out all the hard things in the house. So she piles rocks and stones and, and you know, wood, barks and all that and piles them at a certain spot. And the tortoise, believing that his plan had worked yet again, jumps from the sky, lands on the rocks and his shell breaks. In the midst of his agony, a snail was passing by and he begged the snail to please help put his shell together. And the snail, compassionate animal that it is, helped the tortoise do that. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, the tortoise has a cracked shell. <laughs> so, little things like that, every aspect of our, of, of our lives have, you know, those folk tales that are uh, used to not just educate, uh, but, or, but to form theories, but also to pass across moral lessons. Because what would happen at the end of each folk tale is whoever is telling it, mostly an elder, would say, the lesson thereof is do not deceive others. Do not take things by false pretense. Learn to share, or else you will end up having a cracked shell like the tortoise. Yeah, and I've talked about, you know, how folklore, you know, they're like an anchor, you know, they keep us moored, you know, in our identities, in, in, in our societies, in our communities, but also in the wider world. Because if, if you understand that Thor is a major her to me, you know, then it means that at some point, we all sought, you know, answers 
to a common phenomenon and we somehow worked out this amazing thing that though we're in different locations, somehow had the same th thoughts, you know, running through. So perhaps if we get together now, we will still be able, you know, just imagine the power of, you know, of us getting together to formulate new stories, new mysteries, new uh, identities for who we are in this modern time. And as a person, I tell my stories with poetry. Now, now, this is the part where I start talking about me, you know. Uh, but like I said, storyteller, folklore, we still need to keep this alive, each and every one of us. I mean, Hannah put something out on, um, well, on the socials the other day and said everyone is creative, and we believe everyone is creative. You know, so it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, if you're drawing, you know, if you're painting, if you're writing, if you're speaking, you know, we all need to keep our folklore, our stories alive uh, and through time. You know, I just happen to do mine with poetry. I wonder what you do yours with. Um, I've had two studio albums uh, that again mirrored the times we're in, Revolutionary Verses and Wachiku. Please check them out on your different you know, platforms and, you know, again, just Try and see if you can point out, you know, what stories I'm telling at each one, or in each one on and in each track. I've been a cast in Nigeria's first spoken word theater production, um, in you know, toured Lagos and Berlin, Germany, courtesy of um, uh, the Goethe Institute, and you know, and yeah, some day we were on a train and we decided to just do an improv. Quite interesting. And uh, I've had, you know, I've produced a live performance of my spoken word album, uh, you know, and there uh, with a group of, you know, amazing people. But again, all in a bid to make sure that our stories are kept alive. And now, uh, I formed a company called Griot. Now, Griot, uh, if if you if you don't know, they were they were sort of like the historians, the oral, the keepers of the oral histories not oral histories anyway, the keepers of the history through oral tradition in West Africa. So they would go from place to place. They were sort of like our living walking libraries, you know, but who also brought our history um, to life in colorful ways through music, through poetry, through uh, entertainment, through dialogue, you know, just so that the fires of, um, of our identities were kept aflame. And I think it's important, you know, to have this you know, going forward, you know, so the Griot Company um, uh, is formed to tell stories, especially of underrepresented people, you know, and um, if, when you drill it down as well, uh, to those of African heritage. And we're working on Adani, which is a short film, uh, which will be our first major um, production in the UK. Uh, Adani tells the story of a young lady who, uh, after an accident, develops aquaphobia and she needs therapy to try and walk through this, to try and get herself out of this. But then in the true tradition of African folklore and African mysteries, nothing really is as it is. You know, so the person who she's gone to meet, you know, the, the therapist is anything but a therapist. The accident was anything but an accident, you know, but uh, let me not say too much right now, you know, and uh, <laughs> meet me later and we can talk about it. But really, it's, it's how I, I'm looking at how we can bring back these stories to the modern time, because if you lose your stories, if you lose your, your, your histories, you lose yourself. You know, and really, no one should. No one should be made... Uh, through, you know, willful ignorance or, you know, through um, re-education or whatever, you know, whatever way to lose a sense of identity. And I believe, you know, that this will help to bring that back. So I will be needing your support. You, uh, what you can do is scan the uh, QR code on the screen. It will take you to a form where um, I would ask, you know, you, a few questions. Uh, and, you know, of how you can, if you're willing to support the um, production of uh, Adani and how we can make this happen. Just leave it there for a minute. And in the 
in keeping with tradition, what I'll do is end on a note with some poetry. Can I do that? Yeah. All right. This is titled Home. It's off uh, my second spoken word album. It just talks about um, people's experience. At the arrival lounge of a foreign airport, you'll recognize it. The Black Sea of Migrants. Wave after wave, it pours into a white shore of hope, a desperate attempt at cleansing itself from a history it would rather soon forget. But if you've ever been to the beach, you'll know that the sea always swallows its own. And on this occasion, the Black Sea proceeds. Hands turned to the back of a returning tide, faces turned away for fear of recognizing a particular scent. Home is a stench that must be forgotten. But I will remind you. I will scar you with memories of home like deep set travel marks. Peel away at those layers that have become you. Your clothes, your nice jewelry, your fake accents, your children who do not know the taste of fresh spun proverbs, your early morning runs, your midnight snacks, the ever present assurance that everything will be okay, they will not be okay, they will never be okay. For no matter how far you run, how many skins you wear, how many memories you bury in the quicksands of time, I will still be here reminding you of home, of the white ram with lightning in its eyes and thunder in its teeth, of the tortoise that rode the back of the elephant and dined in the skies, do you remember who you are? Do you know why we sing, why we take her, her children back into the belly of Annie or pour libation when we pray? Do you know why we mark our bodies with chalk or call our full names when we speak? Do you know who you are? Or did you fall out of the ocean? Cling with bleeding fingernails to the sand of the beach as you crawled your way to a foreign land. Did the trickster sell you a lie? Do you answer to a new name now? Speak with new tongues now. Speak on the, on the mysteries of your home. Hack away at your family roots whose history do you embrace. Home is not a destination on a tour map. Home is in your heart. So wear it on your skin. And when they ask you what you will be called, look them in the face and say, Amadi, Mwachuku, Mwafo, or just tell them your name. Thank you.